It's the end of summer and my backyard fruit tree orchard is doing well, almost too well. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why you really should consider pruning your fruit trees in the summer. I'll get to this massively overgrown peach tree in a second, but first let's take a look at my citrus orchard. This is something I planted about a year and a half ago now. And I have to say it really has absolutely exploded in growth. Now citrus, you have to prune it differently than you would prune something like that peach tree. Reason being, it is not a deciduous tree. It's not going to lose its leaves in the winter, and it really wants a nice, tight canopy. And citrus really grows more like a bush or a hedge than it does a traditional tree. So given my unique situation, and you watching, if you're looking at a backyard orchard where you want a little bit more variety, but less fruit per variety, plant it like this. I have these planted very close together. Eventually, these will make up a true hedgerow full of fruit. So how do I need to prune this? Well, it is August. It is time to cut down this top canopy a little bit. I see a lot of these plants here, these stems just kind of running up and I need to cut that down a little bit. But in contrast to something like a deciduous plant, you do not want to open this canopy up. You want to keep it nice and tight instead of that sort of vase or open structure that you're going to see me do in just a second here. So with citrus, it's even okay if you take off a little bit of fruit. I have a lime tree down here that I'm probably gonna lose a couple of fruit. It's not a big deal. It's gonna be producing most of the year. So I'm just coming down and clipping a lot of this growth off to manicure and shape this plant. And I also know that this is a plant I want to sort of run in to the rest of my citrus so I can prune this sort of gap between the plants in such a way that they're not going to really crash into one another. So another thing to consider when you're pruning in the summer, same rules apply to traditional pruning. So the three Ds, dead, diseased, or damaged. I see a little bit of leaf miner action here on the citrus. And you know, that's something that really affects citrus, especially in the first couple of years of its life. But I've kind of given up on this idea of spraying it or controlling it. As the citrus grows, it becomes naturally more resistant. The leaves are thicker, harder to penetrate. So I'll take off some of this that I see hit by leaf miner damage or certainly anything that's actually damaged or, or dead, but I'm not gonna stress and start to spray the plant. But this is a fantastic opportunity to actually look with your gardener's eyes on the plant and see what's going on. So as I remove this last little piece from this particular tree, remember it's about balance in the orchard and that's what a summer prune really helps to do. I have this orange right here and then I have a Japanese yuzu right here. This is obviously a much smaller plant that is currently fruiting and I'm actually very proud of that. So I do not wanna mess with this plant. If I prune it, I'm going to hamper its growth for a little bit while it's hanging on fruit. And it's already shorter than not only this tree, but most of the rest of the citrus that you see in the orchard. So it's about selective decision-making. Here, I can take this off, no problem at all. If I did that with my yuzu, well, it'd take even longer to catch up with the rest in the orchard. So here on my Moro Blood Orange, this is the perfect example of things you're gonna to want to remove. There's a ton of leaf miner damage on this plant and they, they like to affect the younger leaves because they can actually get in there and, and devour them. The side benefit is this actually helps prune the space between my two plants here and I can even come in and trim this off a bit to make sure that I'm not running these plants into one another just yet. And up here, there's also a weird sort of offshoot that comes out that if I wanna keep it in line with the rest of the canopy height, I actually do wanna come in and prune that entire piece off right there. Citrus I wanna to keep to no more than about my height, six, seven feet or so. It's not quite there. I'm gonna cut them all down to about five and next year, hopefully they're there. All right, we are done with our citrus and it's time to tackle this monster peach. And it's important to pay attention here because the rules actually are quite different. This is a deciduous plant meaning it's going to lose its leaves in the winter and it prefers a different pruning structure. And as you can see, this one peach is way bigger than the rest of the stone fruit. This is a nectarine here. This peach is easily about a third to half bigger than the other one. I, I don't want that. I, this is gonna be starting to shade out my citrus in the back. It's gonna shade out the apple tree behind it. And while it's not the perfect time to prune, perfect time being perhaps in fall or early winter when the leaves actually start to fall off, it's still a great time. So a couple things to know here. 
Number one, you can tell when your deciduous plants have stopped growing for the season when you don't see a leaf at the terminal bud. Now, I'm actually not there right now. There are more leaves coming out here. That doesn't necessarily mean I shouldn't prune, but it does mean that this plant is still actively trying to grow. We have a kind of a late summer here in San Diego. So what do I want to do first? Control the height of it. Like I said, I want to keep my orchard about six to maybe seven or eight feet tall. This is pushing that in its first year of growth. So I need to come through and cut this down. The first thing I'm gonna do is start to locate some of these larger stems. And if you look right about here, you can start to see just what I need to, to take care of. So what I need to do is come in at a 45 degree angle and cut off right about here or so. So we'll come in, actually we're gonna to wanna to switch this to there and cut it just like that. 45 degree angle allows water to run off and I cut it with the pruner in the correct manner so I didn't crush the plant material that's remaining. I kind of crushed this side. I don't really care. I don't need this anymore. So come through, we'll do a height cut first. So as we cut this down, something to remember here, this is a peach tree that we actually pruned pretty hard in winter before we placed it into the ground. And what we think happened there is as it was winter, all the plant's leaves had produced all the energy they were going to for the season, and they were totally good to go. Now I'm pruning this in summer now, mostly to maintain that height, but also we got so many peaches off this tree last year. Thank goodness we actually pruned it that closely because it, the peaches could stay on the tree. If I was to let this go next year, these branches would be so long and spindly, the amount of fruit we'd have set on them would actually probably break the branches or we'd lose a lot of fruit. So this is just another reason to prune it in summer. Yeah, you are removing some of this tree's growth potential. However, it's a more manageable tree, which is really what you want in the backyard orchard. So if you're gonna prune these lateral shoots, that'd be the shoot that comes off of a more vertical one, what you wanna do is there's gonna be a cluster of leaves kind of at the branching point. Count a few buds out. So there's one, two, three buds out and give it that 45 degree cut right there. So now what's gonna happen is the bud right below is going to continue the branch the next season. That's gonna be the one putting out the vegetative stem and at least traditionally or typically, the ones below that are gonna be the ones that are gonna be forced into a fruit. So in a peach tree or any sort of deciduous stone fruit style tree to prune in the summer, remember it's not like citrus, you, you actually do want a bit of an open canopy. So I'm really gonna look for dead diseased or crossing branches to kind of open this up. We in fact did this last year to our royal apricot tree in the backyard and it absolutely exploded in growth. We got, I don't even know, 100 more apricot. We tasted them on the Epic Homesteading channel. So if I come in here and I see a branch that's kind of running into nothing, so to speak, like this one right here is a great example. It is going straight up, probably because it's trying to reach the light, but I know it's not really gonna be that productive. I'm gonna take it all the way back and remove it. And as you can see, you now have a much larger and more open canopy. And in fact, you can even see where we topped this off last year and you can see the growth that came out as a result of that. There's a level of pruning for shape here that I'm really looking for. It's about the aesthetic of the tree, for me at least, as much as it is about the performance because I don't need a million peaches. I need a beautiful peach tree in my backyard that produces fruit for me. So I'm seeing a little bit of an irregularity on this side that I wanna come in and shape out because otherwise it's kind of like just a law of nature. Anything that has the ability to run is gonna run with the resources that it has. So what I wanna do is cut this down even a little bit more and create a bit more of a balanced structure on this tree. And ugh, my Felco F2s are good at the job, but that's quite a thick stem, but they made short work of it nonetheless. Okay, I think I'm good here. I'm just gonna do a quick prune on these. Remember, your backyard orchard needs to work for you as the gardener. So you can break some rules or do some somewhat unconventional things because that's what you need. I don't need these coming into my bed here. I'm gonna prune these back a little bit. So hopefully you learned something. Stay tuned for more, subscribe, cultivate that like button, and good luck in the garden and keep on growing.